Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Uh, being 6.30, we'll start the uh, Thursday, December 1st, 2022 meeting of the Westminster Select Board. Uh, before we get going on this agenda, I'd like to introduce the new town manager, town of Westminster, Mr. Ken Fay. Um, started a couple days ago. Still here, that's a good sign. <laughs> so uh, we'll move on. Any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, um, since we have some special guests tonight, I'd like to um, move the conflict of interest adoption policy, which will be take some time for us this evening. Um, just move that uh, down the list into uh, the new business discussion and move the waste management discussion up um, as a priority so our guests can get to where they're going. I know they're busy and they've got stuff to do. Um, and also, Mr. Chair, at this point, I'd also like to move the uh, executive session up to D um, to go into executive session and make a motion to do so to discuss the citizen of the year and dedication of the town report. I'll second. Okay, uh, motion has been made and seconded to move. Recording stopped. Sorry, you said not to do it. Um, <laughs> of course. Recording in progress. Uh, motion has been made and seconded to move. Um, Waste management discussion uh, to the top of the list and move conflict of interest down, as well as uh, enter an executive session with the manager for the citizen of the year dedication town report. With the manager, sorry. Okay, okay with the manager. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on, we'll go acceptance of the minutes, November 9th, 2022. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes with a correction. It says that Richard Parker from the Planning Commission was there, but it's Richard Walker. Okay. So, motion to accept the correction. Okay, second. Uh, motions are made and seconded to accept the minutes with corrections. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Communications and public comments. Seeing none, we'll move on to what is now waste management discussion. Okay, well, thanks for inviting us. Um, John Fay is our programs manager. Are you guys related? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's great to have the new town manager here tonight. Um, and also, Joe, who you guys all know, um, we're all partners in this crazy business, recycling, solid waste hauling, composting, and all the regulatory requirements the state throws at us. So um, when we sent out our assessment and annual budget, I said in my cover email, hey, any select boards want to have us come by? And Kevin uh, took us up on it. As you know, Kevin is our rep and has been he's been participating in almost every meeting and he follows on Russ Hodgkins uh, several years, I think three years. Russ was really active, was on the finance committee, contributed a lot. Um, he came in a little, you know, questioning what is this group, you know, we spent a lot of money and and then in the, I think in the end, he thought we were doing a decent job. So, um, and then prior to Russ was Jan Amin. And um, so Westminster, I pointed out in the letter, and I'm not gonna go through everything in here, is our second biggest town. And the voting is, is apportioned by population. Every 3,000, you get one vote and you guys have 16 more than 3,000 so and you have had more than 3,000 for a long time so you have two votes um, all the other towns except Brattleboro and they're the host community they have 12,000 something and they get extra vote because they host the landfill it goes way back anyhow um, it it's significant if there's any close 
controversial um, issue that, and we had that with the closing of the MRF in 2017. So anyhow, if you do the math, how many votes, you know, five towns, if it's Brattleboro and Westminster and a few others can carry a majority of the votes. So I just wanted to say it's, I think it's good you pay attention to what happens down the district. And um, so we, um, we're, just, we're very, really pleased that our district has been so financially stable for the last really four years. And it, we went through a very rough period with the MRF running, we processed dual stream recycling, the world went single stream. Can you explain what MRF is? I'm sorry, the materials recycling facility. That was uh -oh. the plant. I'm sorry. Gotcha. No, I said. Come on, MRF. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't I know that? No, no, no. <laughs> and, um, and be, I don't know how many of you knew we had a facility for 20 some years. I've been there 10 years, so I wasn't involved with the early operations. Um, but we processed bottles and cans. You had your drop off here, all the towns did. Mm -hmm. We hauled them, we provided a very visible service and that was part of your membership. So we closed the MRF and we took away the containers and I was like, so what do we get? You know, that was the visible part. And, and Craig's been through all this, he remembers all this. And um, so anyway, we've tried to show the value and it is real to the member towns um, and by expanding into a lot of other areas. And that's what we outlined here. And I think maybe the best thing is we just open it up for discussion because I think most of you saw this instead of walking through all the paragraphs. But we're prepared to answer questions or go through it in detail. And John, feel free to say if you, John's got extensive experience with the state, with private consulting, and we're, he's been with us two years. I'm very fortunate to uh, have John on board. Yeah, well, um, just as we're essentially the Regional Planning Commission for trash. Um, it, the state does require every municipality either have their own plan and do all the requirements required by the Department of Environmental Conservation or else be part of our larger group like the a solid waste district like us. Um, so it really relieves the town of a lot of um, um, I's to dot and T's to cross and planning to do and uh, programs to put on. We do a lot of outreach. We do household hazardous waste. Uh, we host a, a regional transfer station and the second largest composting facility in the state. Um, so there, there's a lot going on down in the district and uh, we really see Westminster as an important member. Um, and. Uh, we know not a lot of people use it daily, the transfer station, but the transfer station is only part of what we do. We really have a lot of other planning work that we do. Well, Joe's company has been bringing food scraps to us through his commercial hauling business. I don't know if you want to comment on that. It's a new, we developed new business around it. Yeah, exactly. And it also took, kept the uh, town, a lot of people in compliance with the composting that came out of the law a couple of years ago. We're doing uh, not that many people, maybe 25 or 30 people a week, but it's a weekly pickup. And, and some businesses? And, yep, some businesses, yep. And Triple T Trucking and Good Enough have developed fairly substantial food waste collection businesses. And um, anyway, so we're expanding our facility. That's really the new big project. We're going to invest at least half a million dollars to get a larger capacity permit. And I don't want to go into the fiasco of the state regulations, but they are. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> no, we're working through it. But basically, um, we hope to be able to serve Joe's future business and the other haulers and, and, and the transfer stations the towns have. Every town has to have drop-off of food, food waste if you have
transfer station. If you don't have one, I mean, you can use Rockingham, but but we what did we say how many residents have excess stickers? I think 42 this year. 42 households. Small businesses that have a lot of stuff, you know, they, they come down. Roofing contractors, they go down. So I'd open it up to questions. Can you, uh, well, the fine work that's being done down there, could you just tell everybody about a battle grow and how that works? Battle grow. You like that? <laughs> uh, marketing is a uh, tricky, trick, tricky business, you know. Uh, but we, we, came up with a, a brand of Brattle Grow compost, and we have, um, we sell, it's the compost site facility is a profit center for the district. We charge for every ton that comes in, and then we sell the product. Right, last year it had a profit of $80,000. Um, our cardboard revenue was 80000 or 60 or 80. It varies. It's all over the place now. <laughs> um, but we, we rely on five retail distributors for our compost because we're not set up to have everyone coming in with their pickup trucks and loading a yard here. So we have um, and, uh, um, five distributors that buy almost 80% like of our product. At a very discounted rate, and then they mark it up like a hundred percent, and they do pretty well with it. And Allen Brothers came on. Yeah, Allen Brothers, Brothers joined us this year. Yeah, um, they have their own compost, but this is a, actually a better quality than a lot of the farm-based compost. Um, I can go on forever about compost. <laughs> so, uh, but it's what I like to say, it's the only recyclable material that's reused locally. Everything else, you have no idea what it turns into or where it goes. Um, and we went to the Casella Murph. We've taken two trips in the last six months for our board members. And it's very impressive. It's in Westman, it's in Rutland. And they really do recycle almost everything they say they do. A lot of people say, oh, they don't. Well, they do. And, and you work with different MRFs. Yep. And, but it, right now, as of this month, and there's a monthly fee that Casella sets based on, it's called the average commodity rate. What is cardboard going for? What is, you know, scrap metal? What, and now we're paying, <coughs> we're paying with our hauling $254 a ton for our single stream recycling. Trash is a, with hauling is about $150 a ton, over $100 a ton more. It's really, it's upside down, but we don't have a choice in Vermont. A lot of New Hampshire towns just said, forget it. Um, anyway, so it's, it's tough. It's tough. It Guys, is interesting though. I, I wonder if you could take a real brief moment to talk about the pilot program or uh, you talked about the other night, which was, I believe, Coca Cola or Pepsi. And. Uh, well, well, okay. <laughs> we were approached by a venture capital firm out of New York City. Some people know about venture capital in New York, you know, and uh, they have been retained by some large multinational corporations like Pepsi and Procter & Gamble to help develop the biodegradable packaging. They're getting slammed all over the world because all their packaging, it's not recyclable, but all that film plastic, all that bubble, you know, packaging. And so they're really, a, it's a huge industry, biodegradable products like bags and cutlery and bowls. I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And the U.S. has embraced it. International paper, cargo. I mean, there's all these huge companies, Wendy's corporations. They, they all want to be green. And um, so, anyways, they approached us, this venture capital firm, and said, "Hey, if we pay you ten thousand dollars, can we bring in our consultants and bring in some little bags of biodegradable stuff, and you put them in your piles?" And you just do your temperature monitoring and right, 
and then we'll take pictures of them and document the degradation to prove that Pepsi's whatever works. No brainer. <laughs> yeah. So we just started that. But it, it actually, we had to go through a due diligence that we had um, proper management techniques, permitting, monitoring. So it was kind of a, a affirmation, the quality of operation we have here. You know, it, it meets this pretty high standard. So, um, see, Kevin's paying attention at the <laughs> yeah. It's uh, It's fascinating to watch it grow and all the excellent work that you guys are doing. It really is. Well, I've tested quite a few. I'm saying me, I'm pretty much the person who runs the compost site. Um, quite a few products for companies, and I charge a fee. And I know how to do it. And I, I could have done it, but, it, you know, it's just extra work. So, um, but yeah, anyone here, and I put it in my letter, is welcome to visit our site. Even if you're just in town by yourself and want to stop in for a half hour, I'd be glad to, me or John. We love around. to do show in town. Yes. Yeah. You guys are correct? Yeah, up on Old Ferry Road behind CNS. Really yeah, yeah, exactly. The other, the yeah. other really big um, revenue stream for us is our solar array. And when I started in 2011, within like a year, solar companies were knocking on the door saying, you've got this 25-acre landfill, can we put up solar array there? And Vermont had a, it's all regulated, it's called group net metering policy that set a limit of 500 kW, kilowatt hours, for our group net meter project. That's pretty small. And to go through all the <coughs> permitting and everything, I looked into it, I was like, it's not really worth it. We might get paid seven grand a year to lease just, you know, two acres. So I just, and my board agreed, we're not going to go through all that. But some some legislators and some people in the town of Brattleboro, select board, um, convinced the state legislature to pass a special bill called Act 99 in 2015 that literally opened up the door for a five megawatt group net metered solar array on a landfill in Wyndham County. <laughs> <laughs> and it passed. Suddenly we had an economically viable project. And so we took it on and it was a lot of work. It was a huge amount of work. But now it's in its, it started energized in eight, 2018. So we got four years of operation. We get $120,000 a year lease for 20 years. The landfill was all, like, we couldn't do anything with it. We had to pay to mow it. And then we get 50% of renewable energy credits. And we negotiated that. It was a, a big stickler in the negotiations, but we stuck to it. This year, it's about $140,000, just our share of renewable energy credits. That's a commodity, it, you know, it could go way down or, so a quarter million dollars a year, our annual budget, as we've shown, is about 1.2 million. That's significant. So, and we really don't have to do much. And the landfill, prior to having the solar array on it, um, was one of the first ever to capture the methane gas and um, run it through turbines and sell that to the grid, that electricity back to the grid. In the, so in the early been, 80s. In the early 80s, Stub Thomas. Some of you probably knew, knew Stub Thomas. Now, well, the methane generation is a bell curve and we're at the bottom now. Oh. So um, we've been flaring it off. For we, we closed the years. generator. Gotcha. Yeah, and the energy, yeah. Took it off. And now I'm gonna, we're gonna try to abandon the flares. It doesn't even run. And there's piping all over, it interferes with mowing and so, um, but it was cutting edge, and so the landfill has been producing electricity for decades now. Yep, yeah. but it was closed in '93 or '95, well over, and so whatever organics was percolating up in methane is just dwindled. So, um, and the other thing is the solar company took over responsibility for mowing and annual engineering inspections, and that saved us another ten grand a year. Oh, no, twenty grand a year. 
so it's been a totally successful project and we also have just so you know financially we have a, a state required closure bond when you close a landfill you put money in you set it aside in an escrow to in case there's a catastrophic failure or something and we only have nine years left on that and we have over six hundred thousand dollars in that fund and our annual burn rate on maintenance and everything is like 15 grand a year so we're gonna in nine years have a nice surplus we also borrow internally against that sometimes you know just borrow it from the account so we don't have to go out on the market for paying interest etc but uh, we have we have a really good financial manager vicki hayes um, she's our office manager too comes out of banking and uh, semi-retired super person Uh, I saw it under the hazardous waste disposal that in 2018 there was a one day event held in Westminster. How would we go about getting another one of those at you, some point? You request and actually um, our, in our minds, we were hoping for uh, July of 24 that Westminster would be interested in hosting because I think it's time to get up here. This year we did Wilmington um, and kind of hit the western end and so Westminster would be a great location for another one. We do one a year or one every other year because they're much more expensive than our than our weekly depot. I, I gotcha. yeah. That would cost us at least eight to ten grand for one day. Okay. Yeah. No matter how many, well, yeah, there's a fixed much. fee. Yeah, that. yeah. But we actually, Westminster I think would be a great location um we we did wilmington we also have a re a relationship with the bennington county district and we've been doing one in reedsboro but just for reedsboro residents so if if you think you'd like us to do it in westminster send send us an email we, and we'll we used to do it I know all right at least once a year and that was a yeah we would just tell people to hang on to it and go down there and do it once a year and that was well what's great to ask the same question on those boots people still ask but they can drive down the rider room and it's, now. it's right every week we're open it's 10 yeah. bucks they show up no matter they bring 10 gallons of whatever and so load up their trunk and bring it down you have to prove that you're from uh Westminster? we don't even ask it's the honor system really? we just ask what town you're from <laughs> okay. flat fee for whatever quantities you say yeah yeah it costs us about 70 dollars per car on average but we only charge 10 because we don't want people to be throwing that in the regular trash. We want, to, we want them to know that it, it, there is a cost to handling hazardous waste, but not to have to bear the whole brunt of it. So that's another perk of... And any time, any day that you're open, you can... We, well, that, that's, we call it the depot, and that's open for a few hours every week. We've been doing oh. it Thursday mornings and some Saturdays. Gotcha. So to explain how it's set up. Like, so you just it. you can check on the website and you can uh, do a web form or give us a call to make an appointment. Um, can we eventually get that on our web? So if somebody from Westminster had that question, they could go over to our, our homepage. They would go down and find that. You know that hey, next Saturday I can bring some hazardous batteries down or whatever. That's a great idea to have it on your website as well. Yeah, yeah we would be the first place to go to if you're Westminster. John would John will yeah. work with you to make that yeah. link. Yeah, whoever your your web person is, right. I I'd be you know, have the cost and so anybody would know that hey I'm from Westminster, this is where I take it. Yeah. So in the last few years the states um, made um, paint um, recycling free and we are an official paint drop-off area and so now residents and we don't want it to come to the hazardous waste days because the state pays for separate so we paint used to be like 50 60 percent and so now there's a paint drop-off every day six days a week paint six days a week electronics 
six days a week. There's all sorts of things. Present light bulbs. Yep. Batteries. On that link, if they had a question, could they actually, there would be a link that they would ask the question, hey, I have this, can I bring it there? Like what's appropriate or what? Right, exactly. And it would, it would be actually going back to your web page. Yeah, we have a big list on our web page. Right. Um, or if they want to pick up the phone and just chat, it's always really useful. Um, or, or my email will be on it too. So, yeah. Thank you. Good yeah, good idea. I will vouch that they have a very good website. Thank you. <laughs> so we, one of the things we mentioned there is our education programs and business outreach. We, we, um, we can help any business or school like if they want, if they just want to request. How do I handle this? How do I set up a food waste collection? And I've told Joe this: if he has customers that need signage, we'll pay for it. You know, in the in the restaurant mm -hmm. or in the supermarket back room, or um, and we'll come out and do all that. And we'll train employees how to separate um, and get them hooked up with a hauler. Yeah, you know, we don't promote haulers. We just say, here's who's in your area. But I got to tell you, the hauling industry here is all small, basically family owned. And it's really unique in Vermont. Joe can tell you that most of the state is, is dominated by Casella. Yeah. They do a great job, nothing at all against them, but, you know. It's great to have our independent it is. down It's probably here. a lot less personal. It's, it is yeah. a lot big, less. Big it, it actually really is. It's like, you know, you who do I call, you, you know? You can't get a hold of anyone there. Yeah, for sure. Or you call Ruterio and... He picks up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I'm coming back from Denver. I'll get back <laughs> and get back. So, uh, but anyways, it's, it's fun to meet with you guys. And thank you. We really appreciate thank the Thank you chance. very much for yeah. coming. Yeah. Great info. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And you should come down. I will. <laughs> oh, I told them. I, yeah. I, I told Kevin, we... The towns can have an alternate, a representative and an alternate. So if you, Westminster, to my knowledge, hasn't had an alternate in years, but um, if you wanted to have an alternate, you could do that. I'd like to make a motion to make Ken Fay, our new town manager, the alternate. That wasn't set up, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Piling it on already. <laughs> Might as well get in deep as you. Motion has been made and seconded to appoint uh, the new town manager Ken Fay as the alternate representative to William Solid Waste District. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. Yeah, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks nice to meet you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, let's see. All right. We'll uh, we'll move to unfinished business conflict of interest policy. Okay. We are finally at the section which we began back in June. So. Uh, everyone will have both a copy of the new proposed conflict of interest for adoption this evening. Uh, and uh, this is going to take about 15 minutes. So forgive me, I'll try and go as fast as I can. Um, conflict of interest policy. So this policy, so everyone uh, knows, um, is pretty much crafted off uh, the adopted policy from September 14, 2010 which was adopted uh, by the select board at that particular time. Uh, there have been uh, several additions made. Um, this has been discussed and reviewed uh, again since June or even earlier. Uh, our objective here, um, and again, uh, whatever the vote will be at the end, is to make sure that certain matters are um, dealt with a little bit more um, uh, specifically. Again, it is a policy. It is not a, a written rule, it is not a law. It is a policy that um, is to apply to all public officers, employees, and agents of the town to act in a manner that um, is both ethical and um, 
honest and open about conflict of interest. So I'll get quickly to the additions. Both, every uh, member of the board tonight has both the original adopted September 14, 2010. So this is the, the policy. And the December 1st, 2020 uh, to be adopted. Directing your attention to the first paragraph. Um, the exact um, um, information comes off the first policy. So for adoption by legislative body as policy, as a policy, it applies to public officers. That would be us. All employees inside um, the town and agents. Agents as defined, which would be on page two, an agent is any person or persons or actors who are engaged in extended contract with the town in perpetuity, covering as some examples, and they're just examples, finance, IT, and any other activities that employ uninterrupted services to the town under a contract covering at least 12 months. This obviously excludes contractors and most of the people that do business uh, with the town uh, at or within Westminster. Um, moving again back to page one. The policy replaces the conflict of interest policy adopted on 9-14-2010. And it covers all conduct moving forward from December 1st, 2022. That's this evening, right now. It is expressed that all signatories today are signing to move this policy forward from today onward. And it is established for all future boards to re-sign and agree to whenever the board membership changes in the future. Now, of course, this does not obligate any future board from amending, changing, or scrapping this particular policy by majority vote. Moreover, does it not in any way uh, aggrieve any party prior to this? What it simply notifies is that this is the party, this is the policy from here on forward. And these are the um, uh, aspects of that policy. So whatever occurred prior to tonight, that's out. Whatever occurs coming now afterward, that's how the policy will apply to agents, employees, and members of this board. We are a legislative body. We have the authority to conduct this, and it's granted to us under Vermont 24 VSA 229120, which comes off the original policy which was adopted. Um, the purpose of this policy, again, I'll try to be brief, is to ensure that business of this municipality will be conducted in such a way that no public official or employee of the municipality will gain a personal or financial advantage from his or her work for the municipality so that the public trust in municipal officials will be preserved. It is also the intent of this policy to ensure that all decisions made by municipal officials are based on the best interests of the community at large. It is also intended to promote ethical standards of conduct that also shun and refute improper behavior, to include duress, defamation, and any conduct that produces a hostile work environment or interferes with or impedes the best practices of executing all business of the town of Westminster. Directing again the only two additions from the last policy, of which this is almost a carbon copy, page two, defining duress in general. The rest is the intentional use of pressure or threats, violence, constraints, or any other action brought to bear on someone to do something against their will or better judgment. Defamation. Defamation is a conduct with the intent to hurt, damage the reputation of someone by libel or slander. Finally, and this was added, to set a standard of conduct to require that all potential conflicts of interest are to be clearly, concisely, and completely disclosed at all times. Moving directly off the uh, policy down to from the 2014-2010 policy, defining conflict of interest. A direct or indirect personal interest of a public officer, that also includes, I'm going to double up on there to save time, a direct or indirect financial interest, and this applies according to the original adopted policy. Public officer, employee, or agent, his or her spouse, household member, child, stepchild, parent, grandparent, grandchild, sibling, aunt or uncle, brother or sister-in-law, business associate, employee or employee, employee or employee, forgive me, 
in the outcome of a cause, proceeding, application, or any other matter pending before the officer or before the public body in which he or she holds office or is employed or holds agency. Three, a situation where a public officer, employee, or agent has publicly displayed a prejudgment of the merits of a particular quasi-judicial proceeding. This shall never apply to a public officer's employee, excuse me, this shall never apply to a public officer's employee or agent's particular political views or general opinion on a given issue. They have no bearing here. This is not a political forum at all, and never has been. A situation where a public officer, employee, or agent has not disclosed ex parte communication with a party in a quasi-proceeding. Halfway there, Mr. Chair. You're good. Um, agent to rest and defame were all additives. Emergency official act or action and quasi-judicial proceeding are subsequently described therein. Article 4 is disqualification. A public officer shall not participate in any official action if he or she has a conflict of interest in the matter under consideration. All agents, agency, and employees must, in the very least, disclose any potential conflict of interest. A public officer shall not personally or through any member or his or her household, business associate, employer, or employee represent for or negotiate in private capacity on behalf of any person or organization in the cause, proceeding, application, or other matter pending before the public body in which the body, excuse me, which the officer holds office or is employed. C, in the case of a public officer who is an employee, the public body which appointed that public officer shall have the authority to order that officer to accuse him or herself from that matter. Public, public officers shall not accept gifts or other offerings for personal gain by virtue of their public office and they are not available to the public when they are not available to the public in general. Public officers shall not use resources available in the general public, including but not limited to town staff time, equipment, supplies, or facilities for private gain or personal purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to point that that is word for word off the original policy. No changes were made whatsoever. Article 5 on disclosure also, no changes made. A public officer who has reason to believe that he or she has or had may have a conflict of interest but believes he or she is able to act fairly, this is a very important part of this, objectively and in the public interest, in spite of the conflict of interest, so prior to participating in the official action on the matter, disclosed to the public body at public hearing the matter under consideration, the nature of the potential conflict of interest, and why he or she believes that he or she is able to act in a matter fairly, objectively, and in the public interest. That's why this is just a big nothing burger. As long as the, 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 the disclosure is made and that person who's in a conflict or a potential conflicted role, honestly, and as this describes, says, hey, I can get the job done, I'm local, let's keep the money local, perfectly fine if everyone agrees. That's no change from what it was. Nevertheless, the person or public body which appointed the public officer retains the author authority to restore order that officer recuse himself or herself from the matter subject to applicable law. Last, uh, excuse me, second to last, recusal. Public officer shall recuse him or herself for any of the matter in which he or she has a conflict of interest, um, pursuant to the following. There's several bullets here. Any person, according to the original rule, uh, may request that a member recuse him or herself due to a conflict of interest. Such request shall not constitute a requirement that the member recuse him or herself. A public officer who has recused him or herself from a proceeding shall not sit with the board, deliberate with the board, or participate in that proceeding as a board member in any capacity. If a previously unknown conflict is discovered, the board may take evidence pertaining to the conflict and, if appropriate, adjourn to a short deliberative session to address that conflict. The board may adjourn the proceedings to a time certain. If, after a recusal, it may not be possible to take action through the concurrence of a majority of this board. The board may then resume the proceeding with sufficient members present. In the case of a public officer who is a appointee, the public body, which appointed that public officer shall um, have the authority to order that officer to recuse him herself, uh, subject to applicable law, which are both referenced in here. Finally, and one of the more important ones, what happens when we have conflict? This is enforcement progressive consequence for failure to follow the conflict of interest procedure. In cases where the conflict of interest procedures in Article 5 have not been followed, the select board may take progressive action 
to discipline an offending public officer. In the discipline of a public officer, the board shall follow the following steps in order. The chair shall meet informally in private with the public officer to discuss possible conflict of interest violations. Then the board may meet to discuss the conduct of the public officer. Executive session may be used for such discussion in accordance with one Vermont statute annotated 3134. The public officer may request that this meeting occur in public. If appropriate, the board may admonish the offending, uh, the offending public officer in private. If the board decides that further action is warranted, the board may admonish the offending public officer at an open meeting and reflect his action or her action in the meeting of in the minutes of the meeting. The public officer shall be given the opportunity to respond to that admonishment. Upon the majority vote and a majority vote, the board may request that the offending officer resign from the board. The offending officer, however, shall be under no legal obligation to resign even after a majority vote. He or she can be asked to leave in public, but we have absolutely no way of making them leave the board. By majority vote, the select board may also censure the offending officer. Censure shall include either or both a verbal statement placed into the record or in a written statement of censure. For the purpose of this conflict of interest policy, the definition of censure shall be the expression of severe disapproval of someone or something, especially in a formal statement. Lastly, in Article 8, exception, the recusal provisions of Article 6 shall, shall not apply if this legislative body of the municipality determines that an emergency exists and that actions of the public body otherwise could not take place in such cases. A public officer has reason to believe he or she is a conflict of interest shall disclose such conflict um, and such conflict of interest is provided in Article 5. This would be, for some reason or for whatever it is, a return finally after a 12-year absence of a conflict of interest policy. Um, the policy shall become effective immediately upon the adoption by the Westminster Select Board on December 1st, 2022. Mr. Chair and everyone else, thank you for your time and patience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really. Are there any discussion or questions on uh, this policy? Okay. Make a motion to adopt it. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the conflict of interest policy dated December first, twenty twenty three. Any discussion at this time? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do we have to have a master? I do. I do. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll move to B, uh, website discussion. Susan, is that you? Uh, I didn't get on the agenda, but I do want to speak to it. Sure. Thank you, Susan yeah. Harlow. Um, thank you for finally taking this up. As you know, we started a couple of years ago trying to update our website, which is difficult to navigate and needs a lot of work. Yeah. So we've had several people work on it. As you know, we've had some bad luck with people working on it, but I I believe, not being an IT person, that it's pretty close to being done. Um, so we need, we, I'd like to have you hire someone who could finish it and also maintain it to a certain degree. Um, and I believe we uh, voted, what, $2,500 maybe, someone so. would know in the budget to do that this year and maybe we'll do it next year. Um, so anyway, uh, it's something that really has to happen. This is discussion with the waste management people showed us, that was great. Um, so I had given Allie several n names of a couple people and all of some references. I think she was going to, I don't know where she got with that and that's up to you, but um, I really encourage you to hire someone to finish that um, we really need to improve our, our communication and our public information in town. And not just, well, the website is the most important thing, I think. Um, there is a Facebook page, of, which is under my name, that I can make someone in the town 
an administrator so they can work on it. Um, just let me know. Um, and so there should be someone who would you know, do some basic stuff with that. We need to have more than just the Gazette, which is great, but it only comes out once a month. So anyway, I thanks. agree. Putney, Putney and Brattleboro have a very active Facebook page, and they do a very good job, and they seem to have a lot more community engagement. Yes, and Chuck has the uh, highway department, and there's a lot of people that yeah are yeah. on that. And I guess that's one another point I wanted to make, is I think if we have a greater, better communication presence, there being more people who want to get involved with the town, volunteer for boards, know what's going on, I think it's a really important thing. So anyway, thanks for taking this up. I don't have any issue with the Facebook page part of it. I, I don't have any interest in being being part of it, so long as the no comments are right, and I mandatory, no yeah. comment, information yeah. only, get it out there. Yeah, I really and I think that's how Chuck that. is and has worked out, uh -huh. I think, reasonably well. Not yeah. speak for him, but. Yeah. Right, right. I have not seen any comments on the highway, and I think that's the way we started it. Correct, and that was the stipulation with it. You right, right, and I'm all good with that. I yeah. think that's fine. We don't need more drama than that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. It still goes back to, uh, I don't, we got a terrible one page, it really is. And that's because a little bit, yes, we need somebody to help us, but we none of us can do it. We need to have somebody that's there. So whatever is when we come back with what we hire, we got to have the staff on board mm -hmm. that this is friendly, this can be used. Mm -hmm. The other day when I was trying to find, I couldn't find this like one minute. I had to go back and find the minutes. I'm going like, how yeah. can we not post them yeah. next board meeting? You know, yeah. on it. So we we got if the staff said, hey, this is the way we want to go, that would influence my person mm -hmm. where we should. What? And go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was no, going to no. say when we talked to the two people who were working on the Facebook page, that was one of the things both of them said that they would make the, the web page easy for the staff to update or automatically update or so Kelly or someone could easily put things on the website. I still think you need to have someone sort of an IT person or a person mm -hmm. part time. And yeah. Updates and yeah, I don't think it would take very long and um, I think you can make the web page so easy for people, you know, Pauline whoever to put stuff on it. Well, they, uh, Kelly did ask the our current provider, uh -huh. e, e Biz Tech Online, about if they were able to help us. And they use the term tweak the website, I, and not necessarily redo the website. And they replied, I mean, without going into all of it, that, uh -huh. that they could do that. It would depend on what we really wanted to do with it, whether it was a revamp or just an adjustment. I was kind of, I was, well, more than one reason I was bummed with Russ yep. Lazaric because yeah. it really looked great what he did at the firehouse that we saw. Yeah. So yeah. do we have access? Does someone have access to yes. that work? Yes, I have the login. Um, and the last time I looked, which huh. was a year ago, I could log in and see. And a lot of it is already done. The new basic design is done. And yep. just the information has to be updated. You know, it's like a whole, you know, who's on the board and who's on the commission and how to get hold of them and that yeah, has yeah. to be updated that's the thing but the design is done yeah. it's much easier to navigate but I do have to log in and I'm happy to send it to anybody who wants it my hesitation personally with going with an individual person uh -huh. versus is we've gone that route before yeah and unfor I mean unfortunately what Russ happened what happened yeah. but with the, I can't remember the name. I can't remember the other names. Yeah. It seems like we just throw money and it doesn't go over anywhere. Just Versus a company, a service that that's what they do. I, and there's so many. I go on all of them. Yeah. Because I'm always we're the only one that don't have a very good index where you can actually click on and find the select board. Yeah. And then yeah. Our dictionary is horrible, but I see so many towns that I can come back to you at least four or five. They must have the same people because it's the same layout. And you're going, man, this is nice and easy. And yeah. So somebody didn't invent it. It's the town of Woodstock uses this town. Yeah. I, know. I don't know why we couldn't at least contact some of those and say, who did you hire to do this? Because right. it's yeah, obviously it's working. And, and a lot of these towns are using the same format. Yeah. I know Allie had talked to Putney, Rockingham. I don't know, maybe there's a uh -huh. few more. I don't, I don't exactly remember. She was just... She was trying to get feedback back from them. Right, good. Yeah, still, I so. told her there was somebody who was interested in working on it, and I said, this is the 
towns that this person has worked for, so she was going to check it out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, it's in the works, I guess, at this point. We, we can table it for the, obviously not going to make any decision tonight. Right. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't think anybody's against up, updating it. Oh, it totally has to be. Yeah, it has to be so much easier. It has to be now. more user friendly. Yeah, like everybody looks for stuff on their phone now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. yeah that's so awesome. if you find someone, I mean, it's been very difficult. I know when I went looking, people say, "No, I don't. I don't do websites." I mean, nobody does that. I'm thinking somebody must. Yeah. Right. Right. They're really good friends with the uh, girl that did the Chester Vermont website. If you want. Uh -huh. I can give you her name. Yeah, well, that would be whoever one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> not, <And> not Susan. <laughs> well, I'm not. No, no, I know. No, so no. But just... even what we have, is, which is irritating, is we, we don't use it. In other words, I went the other day and looked. It's the same select board members that are not on the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and nobody's whose job is that to update? That's Nobody, why nobody like, wants That to should be it. very basic and easy right. to do, though. It I should. was under the impression that was something Kelly did, but I don't know that. For, I don't know where I got that. I was just. She does a few things, but I. What she had told me originally was that it was difficult to do, and so that's the whole idea with a new website is that it's going to be easier for people to put stuff on. That was a. You know, it, easier to navigate and easier to use for the... 100%. Uh, when you go onto the websites where they make the agenda so easy to find, yeah. the minutes are hard. Ours, you can find minutes, but you can't find the agenda half yeah, the time. Right. You've got to be able to go to the front page and go, hey, I'm thinking about going to the select yeah. board meeting, hit the agenda, and there it is. Yeah. 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 And anyway. similar things like with Solid Waste, being able to have a, yeah. a link to... Yeah. Yeah, different yeah. things, you know. Yeah, you want to, and, and someone does have to keep it up because it's stuff that's old on there, you know, it's like meetings from months ago. And, uh, this does not look, look good for us, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, anyway, thanks for getting on. So, do we want? Do we since we have a captive audience here? Do we do we want that contact info? For that person, yeah. Who, who yeah. do we want to give I would say it just to? from whatever, everything you're saying, she's really good about that, like setting it up so it's really easy for the people to use. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Who do we want to be in charge of that project? Yeah. Because right. There's, even if they came back to the select board and said we went on and we did looked at Chester's, we looked at that, that uh -huh. we could at least as a select board come back and go, hey, the the one we like the best is Putney or the, it could be Dumber right. Center, and then that at least gives whoever we're going out to hire. An, an idea of what we're looking for. Right. Because I can't invent it, but I can see it there. Right. But you yeah. also want to look at the one that's been done, the new Correct. one. Yep. And you might not it like was, it at all, but it's better. It was, yeah. And I, I thought it was great. Yeah. And it's it's almost ready to go, except every day that it isn't done, the stuff gets more and more at day, outdated. So. And this becomes an office question is who in the office is Thanks. going to do yeah. it? I've done stuff with websites mm -hmm. before. Once it's set up, they're easy to maintain. Yeah. You log in, you edit stuff. It's mm -hmm. easy. It's not hard. So yeah. somebody in the office needs to step up and say, I will take on this as part of my responsibility. Yeah. It could really, I mean. Yeah, I agree. And I think that not to put more stuff on people. That person should also be in charge of the Facebook that's their page. Job. That's their job. So <laughs> press releases. I mean, a lot of times just, you know, Send up stuff, you know, right. town meeting coming up or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's it's easy to do. Well, I won't say that. But you just need someone to do who's it. delegated to do it. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Thank While you. While you're there, yes. may I impose one other thing on yeah. you? What? You came up with a wonderful suggestion about um, budgeting this year and inviting uh, people who should be there for our in-camera budgeting process. Right. Can you just share that thought? Yeah, so a couple of uh, years ago, I suggested that after you finalize the budget in December or whatever, then you have a meeting to talk about the budget so anybody from the public who wants to come in and ask questions before town meeting could come in and get their questions answered. Yes, please. And, yeah, <laughs> so and, so and, and we had one. Not that many people came, but a few people did. We did it for many years. We call it pre yeah. Free town meeting. Yeah, it's not that we people... invited in, and then we would ask. And there used to be people that did come, and we got less and less people mm -hmm. coming. I don't know if maybe we just didn't advertise it enough, or well, uh, there you go. Know. Better advertising yeah. would be yeah. good. I just yeah. think it would save. You know, people can still ask at town meeting, but then it's just right. so much better yeah. if you can answer the questions yeah. earlier, and you know what people are concerned about. Right. 
So, so yeah, I'm suggesting. No. So you're think. you're talking after we set the budget. Yep. You set after that. No, yeah. not, not during the whole. No, I mean, I'm okay. assuming people can come in if they want while you're doing the budget. But this mm -hmm. is after you get the budget, before town. So you don't just show up at town meeting and people look at the budget and go, wait a minute. I interpreted it as during the budget. And I was like, that's going to make that so money. Yeah. And like, no, no, it, no. The, the ideal situation even before you were on, we went, we had a pre -time. at that meeting, we actually had the high school here. I mean, the great, which is the high school or I mean, the Westminster school system. We had the fire department because these were all categories, and we would all have a little bit. So not only would people come in, oh. they ask questions. They could ask, like, what's going on with the school? And it was the only meeting oh. we ever had where we had the select board in, the, the oh. school board in, the fire department. And it would be there's the oh. potential committee. It was the mm -hmm. it was the, the representatives of the school board directors. Oh, that's bigger than and I thought. And it really happened. was yeah. good because in our taxes, it's all about taxes. Right. That's where they're all coming from. And we had a feel that, oh, the school went up a lot this year. Now you're going to answer questions of, you know, how we work together. Right. So just instead of town meeting, everybody asks, you know, they're good. Right. You know, how that goes. So anyway, if you would do that, I think that would be great. Sometime in January, I think, or February. Yeah, he's been doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you, Sue. Thanks, Sue. Uh, so let's table website discussion at this moment so we don't lose it lose sight of it and uh i think by next meeting we should have some information from councilors to add to that uh we'll move on to c town meeting verification we need a motion to verify and uh whatever the term is it the date location and time for town meeting and for voting. Do we all? Yeah, we all have it. Yeah. Which was going to return to the high school. Uh, be Saturday, March 4th, 2023, Bells Falls Junior High School, 10 a.m. Tuesday uh, for the town meeting. For voting would be Tuesday, March 7th, 2023, to elect town officials by Australian ballot, and that'll be at the well, fire district number three, grout out, so at the firehouse, which I think worked out pretty well with the last time uh, of So I would take a motion to. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, go ahead and set the date of, set of Saturday, March 4th, 2023, for the annual town meeting. It will be held at the Bells Falls Union High School Auditorium at 10 a.m. And that. Uh, it would follow through on Tuesday, March 7th, for the Australian ballot to be located at uh, the fire district number three in Broad Avenue. I will second that. Uh, motion is made and seconded to hold the <coughs> town meeting Saturday, March 4th at the high school and the voting Tuesday, March 7th at the fire. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, D will be in executive session after the regular meeting. So we'll move on to E Town Manager's report. <clears throat> um, I'll read it, uh, a little bit of it. Um, the uh, on 11-22, Deputy Fisher and Deputy Wilbur stepped into the office to pick up the junk ordinance and ask questions concerning property with junk issue. They created a case number and went to the residents to speak with them. The resident promised to put up a fence in the spring and to try to bring a letter of intent to the town hall for the file so we can keep track of progress. This has not happened yet. They also stated ongoing issues with their email <clears throat> and they are hopeful they are rectified. This is the, the sheriff's. Uh, animal control officer rate will go from 7,000 per year to 7,200 per year. Uh, the meeting with explanation on funding formula will be on January 10th at 11 o'clock. Looking forward to being back at the BF High School for town meeting Saturday, uh, March 4th at 10 a.m. The clerks will hold the local election. The fire station will be on Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. Um, 
she can be found in the treasurer's office for a week or two, then she will be in the lister's office most every day except when the listers are in. Uh, she is meeting with the listers at some point to talk about zoning permits and the process as well as their role in the end process. And she concludes it by thanking everyone for the opportunity <clears throat> that she has been given to be interim town manager for this great town. Uh, she looks forward to the challenge in her new role at Town Hall and working with all the fantastic folks there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? You know why I'm here. I think I know why you're here. And uh, did you have that, any... Uh, that's what I mean. Before we go there, the junk, the report from the, the report from the sheriff was about this, this particular junk issue. Right. Correct? Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, two things. I think that I hope that the select board recognizes Allison's efforts for everything she's done. She's, she's done a great job. My yeah. issue is she's been on that like a pit bull. Um, I'm trying to get after the sheriff's department to, to respond, do something. However, unless I'm on a totally out of whack here, my, I, my concern was that I don't want this thing to be dropped with a transition to the new town manager and so forth. Um, so I don't want it to fall by the wayside. I don't but see the, that happening. The other part of the ordinance, it isn't just a question of putting up a eight foot fence. They're supposed to be permitted from the town, the way I read it, and permitted from the state to operate a salvage yard. If you review the ordinance, unless I may be out to lunch, but that's not the way I read it. And if, that, if those approvals go through, then then I have to you know build an eight foot fence and it has to be constructed and so forth. You know. That might be a good question for Larry. Yeah, it isn't just a question of yeah, you guys can well, do business. Like I would supposed. question the yeah, zoning. Do they actually have a commercial permit, or is that in the residential? And that's the other yeah. question I had. I was thinking about. I was going to yeah. talk to Ali about it. What's the actual? Is it residential zoning? I mean, it's not. I would. That would be the first thing I would ask. It's, it's like you can't make a business where there's residential. Well, I had a zone. small environmental firm for a while, part out of my home. And when I did it, I jumped up to the town and it was, you know, you're going to put up a sign, how much traffic is going to be there. You yeah, know, right. Exactly. You, you can. There's just a right. process to right. do that. You just but if it's zoned for residential, you got to go in front of the development real board and plead your case yeah. you know, to get use of it. And the neighbors all have a chance to come in, object to it. True. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you got to come in with a plan of how to do that. If anybody's been by there recently, but there's, there's no effort. To, I mean, it's getting worse instead of better. Yeah. yeah. So stuff is just piled up. It very well could be zoned residential commercial. My house is, which I was surprised, but I'm not saying it isn't. Would, I just don't it know. It would be like old. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you'd have to look. I don't know that, but I I don't see it falling by the wayside. Um, we're gonna still. We'll still well, I, that. I know that she said that since the uh, sheriff's department signed a case number to it, then they have to revisit. I don't know how often that takes place or. Given their past it's pretty before. shocking that it took this long just well, to get a yeah, case. It started in August. <laughs> and We're very on, sorry. Based on their last response, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, somebody yeah. has to dog the sheriff's department yeah. to make sure they're doing their thing. So I guess in, that, in the past, that's where we got in trouble where we just kind of let people, we just had a couple where they were building what we thought was a garage to park the vehicles. Next thing you know, the garage turned into a repair shop and it was all done out of a home. If we don't stopped them right away as far as the zoning what's the sense of having zoning well, i mean that's the whole issue is what you zone that's my thing is what, what's yeah. the sense of having the ordinance if they're not exactly. enforcing it okay. so, and we could actually have the case now yeah so my request is that you stay on it mr town manager <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little bit of prodding from the sheriff's department obviously because they're not, too not very responsive all right thanks ken Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Road foreman report. We Chuck's not here tonight. Um, I only had one thing as road commissioner for road foreman report. Just to the general public, uh, we have a couple of new employees uh, with the highway guys, and when we do get some snow, it's going to take them a little bit, I think, to learn the route and how to do it effectively. And so it'd be nice to have some patience, and it'll all get done. And it'll get better as we go. So, other than that, I, I don't have anything else for that. Um, all right. So, executive session. We're going to go to that. So, boards, committees, and commissions. Don't have anything for that? Other than the solid waste commission, they obviously were here. Yep. All right. Uh, other business. 
Uh, as I said, for the uh, next uh, for the next meeting, there was a discussion over which we had, and again, this was going back. This is on an investment policy statement for the town. I think there's some confusion, um, Mr. Chair, over uh, what is uh, the general fund's obligation, and there have been a lot of, unfortunately, uh, attempts um, to put town funds and the general fund into uh, insecure or uh, commission-based products or other things which uh, we need to have a firm policy and a vote on and put it front. So I want to bring that uh, with permission of the board. Uh, I'd like to, uh, in the next meeting, bring in a investment policy statement um, that addresses these issues. So again, along with the conflict of interest policy, we're not handing our money over to a, um, a bank and or a broker dealer um, or a conduit broker dealer that is selling us structured notes that are not 100% either treasury, treasury bill related products. All right. We'll, have, we'll add that to the next agenda. And uh, while we're in other business, do we want to continue with policies, up updating policies? Yes. yes please. Uh, what would we like to look at for the next agenda? Do we want to do the ethics policy next? Yes, I'm almost done with that. Oh, okay. Okay. I just well, figured I didn't want to overwhelm it, but I'm almost done with the ethics policy as well. Okay. Okay, I got this one done. Doing a good job. Yes, and we, on that one. And so we have, have the personnel policy. Personnel policy. Purchasing policy. policy. Yep. I got them all. All right. All right. Here you go. So I guess we can move to two at a time. Okay. The investment policy statement, though, I think is something we should have a public discussion about. It seems like some towns are making this very bad decision to uh, put their money in certain places. And I'm not trying to say anything other than that way. People saw what happened with cryptocurrency and these type of things. And, you know, people that make these policies then can destroy a town's finances and then they just kind of float away. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff on why that shouldn't happen. And uh, I will send out everyone to the, actually the Vermont, Vermont, state of Vermont has tremendous stuff on investment planning for towns. So I'll send that out to everybody, including the town manager and every all the personnel. I would also just say one other thing, um, maybe it's time for another town uh, with our new manager, maybe it's time for another town, uh, excuse me, a team meeting. Hmm. What do you mean by that? What? Yeah. Our, our in, an informal, oh, oh. informal, how are things in the office going? Yeah. 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 You want to get, should we probably have to give it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, a couple weeks. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't mean like six months, just a okay. week or two or something. Yeah. No problem. But the other thing that I brought up, you know, just that's what we're, we're getting behind on coming up with our budget. Our, our budget. And I really thought about the idea of splitting into groups because I don't know, it just never felt good. You sit here and the town manager comes in and reads the next section you go on and you really don't get the involvement. If we could break up into committees, which we used to do that, we would actually sit down with the highway crew, the listers crew in the, in the office, and we would split up. And, be not, and the town manager would be in every one of them. But basically, when we came back in, we would say, okay, these, this is the highway crew. We worked with them. And they, the highway crew would feel better. The, the, the town clerk, the town treasurer would feel better. But they actually had a select board there that they're explaining their needs. And we would understand it better than just going to the town manager and the town manager come back and says this is what they want. We really don't have a discussion with them one on one on it. And I, would, I like that idea. Yeah, I'm not opposed to, to a degree because no, I don't I, know what the list means. I no, well we got a we got a good group. I mean, <laughs> if, for example, you and Kevin did the town clerk, the town treasurer, Jason and I did the highway. He could do the listers with Ali, and and that would be like three groups. It it's a good be, idea. If the town manager would be involved with each one. We would have a section come in and town managers, but it gives them a chance to one on one to sit there and explain the stuff for why they should have something, and we can help them be a little more involved. In it. I like the breaking it down. Yeah, it's a little man, more manageable. When we come back, and then you we have more people that can speak on. Something. Yeah, and when we come in there, we've already, if it's, for example, the highway discussion, we've already been two of us, along with the town manager, involved with that discussion. We know why they're asking for that. 
Right. I'm not, not saying this is the name, but I just threw some ideas. Well, we've got quite a town manager when it comes to finance. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Looking very much forward to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want you have any input yeah. on that idea? No, it sounds great. Uh, you know, going through the budget and instead of um, presenting it sort of like fiat, you're working together. You know, and everybody's, you know, there's no surprises. Also. In the past, I've had complaints back from the staff. Well, that's not what we told them we wanted, you know, and you weren't there. You know, well, there will be a select board at every one of those meetings that we, I think will make them feel a team player. It would definitely eliminate the confusion. Yeah. So Good great. idea to make. So yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, do we need to? Do we want to figure that out right now? Break it up like that now, or I mean, every day you wait, it's a day or five. That's, so. We're getting right. late. I mean, we're, we're already that late. town report's going to come up pretty fast. I hate to say it, and uh, and that it just makes it a little bit easier, even on my agenda, that I don't have to worry about everything in the town. If I only had to worry about one section, you know, and getting those work So it's fine with me. I only reason. Jason and I are kind of involved with the highway crew more than the rest, and then Kevin and Katrina have been really involved with the town hall, so it ought to make a little sense, you know? Uh, I mean, if that's what we want to do, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Nathan would take the, uh, the Worcesters. Worcesters with the alley. With alley. That would make sense. Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll reach we'll out. We'll our town. No, we'll say, we'll let Ken be the coordinator and contacting them and then contacting yeah. us sure. we can break up into groups. This time of year, for myself anyways, I'm fairly local, so right. if it was during the day, you know, yeah. whatever, we can make it work. Yeah. Great. Thank Good you. Idea. Thank you. Right. Uh, before we go into executive session, I just had one reminder for the board as a whole, this is a general reminder that what's discussed in executive session on a, an array of topics that could be, that it stays in executive session. Uh, anything else under other business this time? I would like to also send you uh, an email verb that a lot of the town managers are sending out now. On the bottom, it basically says if you respond more than three people to this email, that I can give you the verbiage, but I'm getting on all of them that, hey, if you try to respond to all, that you're that this is certified as a, a yeah. legal warrant meeting. And it, I'm, I'm bad at that. I'll admit to that right. for sure. And just so that as the town manager sends that stuff out, which in this case he should be able to do it, just not all of us reply back to all, then we're starting a conversation. So I'm going to make a comment because I've been ticked off. <laughs> I'll be honest. So you can send an email and you can reply all to certain things. Like we, we can meet as a group and it, have it be an informal meeting and it's okay. You can do the same thing with certain emails. And I feel like there are discussions that people are being left out of that should be in fault. They, things come down the pike <laughs> that it feels like there's not great communication all the time and I don't know if it's because we're worried about, I understand the open meeting law, I totally get it, but I feel like there's some just general discussion that you can just hit reply all to and it's fine. And I just... Would it be helpful if at the next meeting, or possibly or one after that, if Larry came in and went over you can, it those, like, and I think yeah, with, as a whole, as a group, right. this is generally the way. It is. And I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying the, if you, if I send you, I'll send you the verbiage they put out. It's basically a warning that if right. you do, you can do it. But it's now legally binding minutes. Right. That that you, it's going to be recorded. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, I think uh, that Jason has the best idea on that. We should have our t our town attorney come in on that because I and I don't mean to. Sound pretentious, but I think a lot of this is just feckless contention. Because I agree with Katrina. Not nothing's. There's not any intent to violate 
the statute, but we should, for the record, have Larry come in and say, hey, look, these are the things that we should I really be think doing. That you can't really, look, really, I think this is my personal question. This the town manager is sending out, and we're all replying back to him with information. I don't have it's when we interact and discuss things right. among us. That's different. That's, That's right. You know what I'm saying? So if the town manager says, "Hey, I got a problem. What do you guys want to do?" I think we all should have the ability to email back to all of us and have that discussion. I know at Rockingham, anyways. Uh, Ray Masuko would go once a year yeah. and just give a quick. Oh, yeah. these are the general rules, not like you yeah. know verbatim, but just. So, because you always have a new member right. in March, we're going to have well, potentially a new member, right. or potentially two new members. So, that may may or may not know those rules. So, I think it'd be yep. advantageous to just get it up front. We know an email is so it's so much stronger today than it was oh, for sure. ten years ago. Was even there. I mean, today was how you do everything, basically. I mean, a lot of that's only going to get more and more and more problematic. Yeah. Uh, so Larry coming in, I think. Either, I, either I can or Ken can contact him and just uh, explain the situation. Yeah, ask him to just give a brief overview. So we got to pay him an hour, whatever. It's not a big deal. And whether it's the next meeting or whatever fits his schedule, holidays coming up. I, don't know what but I just want to know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Yeah. All right. Any uh, other business at this time?